Hey everyone, it's Robert Hall, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about choosing between LED and flash for photography. Over the past decade, LED has exploded in quality. With those improvements, a lot of people are considering using LED as a lighting tool instead of flash. I also think some photographers feel that constant lighting is more natural, which is a complete myth. Whether it's constant lighting or flash, lighting follows all the same rules. As someone who works in both the photo and video industries and owns over 50 lights, I wanna talk about all the pros and cons of using LED for photo. The first benefit to using LED is what you see is what you get. And this is similar to the reason that mirrorless cameras became so popular. The fact that you could see live what your image is going to look like as you are capturing it. As you use an LED, you see what happens live. When you change a modifier, you see the changes in light quality. When you adjust the direction, you see the changes in light pattern and light coverage. When you increase brightness, you see the change in light intensity. And this is extremely beneficial to those who are pretty new to lighting because they're not exactly familiar with how light behaves yet. So this is a tremendous perk. Now pretty much every flash outside of speed lights has what's called a modeling lamp, either incandescent or LED. But on battery operated strobes, these modeling lamps are often very weak. Modeling lamps can help with seeing the light quality and seeing the light pattern, but because they are so dim and not actually equivalent to the flash brightness, they don't have the same what you see is what you get aspect. Another benefit of LED is that it's hybrid, meaning that you can use it for both photo and video. This is important these days because a lot of people who do photo are also working or at least interested in creating videos. This could be filming interviews, doing product shoots, or simply just managing your own social media. Having a light that is capable in both photo and video, even if it's less capable in photo, is still a huge perk. Some would argue a benefit of LED is you don't have to wait for it to recycle like you do with flash. While this is true, if you turn on a flash to the point where it's the same brightness as LED, then your flash would recycle immediately. Now, on to the disadvantages of using LED. The first would be, it's not very bright, at least not relative to flash. Let's address this very common misconception. A 300 watt LED is nowhere near as powerful as a 300 watt second flash. A 300 watt LED actually produces about 2% or 1 50th the light output of a 300 watt second flash. So it's off by a massive amount. Because LEDs aren't very bright, that tends to have negative impacts in multiple ways. First off, there's simply images that you can't create with LED. If you're working outdoors in a bright environment, LED probably isn't gonna cut it. Even in a controlled environment, it's gonna impact you in one of four major ways. First, you'll feel very restricted in your camera settings. You'll have to use higher ISOs, wider apertures, and slower shutter speeds. All of these have negatives. At higher ISOs, you're gonna see more grain and less dynamic range. Wider apertures can reduce sharpness, have less depth of field, and possibly make your focusing less accurate. And if your shutter speed is too slow, then you risk creating motion blur. The shutter speed is typically what catches me off guard because my brain operates as if I'm using flash. So I typically use a shutter speed of like 1 to 1 400th, depending on the camera that I'm using. And still you can catch motion blur when using an LED, even on rather slow movements. Now you might hear this and think to yourself, I'll just keep my LED really close and then I'll have a ton of flexibility in my camera settings. <laughs> While this can be a solution, it might not be as capable as you think. Here's a photo with a 300 watt LED, yet my aperture was still restricted way too wide for a quality beauty shot. With flash, you have the ability to pull your light six feet away, 12 feet away, even 20 feet away or more, depending on the brightness of the environment that you're in. And that gives you a ton of control over the characteristics of your light. And if instead you're using LED and you have to keep that light super close, well, you're just throwing away a lot of control. The other issue with LED is that it's bulkier and requires way more power. Here's a quick example. The average speed light is about two pounds. If you want a light that's gonna produce the same brightness, it is going to be way larger. Let's use the Aperture 1200D for example. That is a 20 pound fixture with a 12 pound control box. And that's if you wanna use it on mains power. If you wanna take it away from a wall, well, that means you're gonna have to use four two pound V-mount batteries. So would you rather lug around a two pound setup that could almost fit in your pocket or a 40 pound setup? Now, if you're wondering why is there such a massive size disparity for the same brightness. Well, it all boils down to their efficiency. A strobe is way more efficient because it only has to produce light while the exposure is being captured. Whereas an LED is designed to produce light 
constantly and stay on for long periods of time. So not only does the LED have to be larger, but the cooling system to support it and the power to draw, everything has to be way bigger. This is all necessary for producing videos, but a complete waste for photography. Now, everything that I've said makes it pretty clear that flash is superior to LED for photography, but I haven't even said what I think is the biggest negative of using LED, and that is, losing a separation of settings. Because LED is a constant light source, it does not have a separation from any of the other constant light sources. So if I make a settings adjustment, it's going to apply to all the constant light sources equally. On the other hand, a flash pulse happens in a really short period of time, one two hundredth of a second or less. And this empowers photographers to make adjustments to their camera that apply to the constant light sources or the ambient light in a scene, but without affecting the flash, so it creates a separation of settings. Take this image for example. The model is lit with multiple colored flashes and one colored LED light. The images were captured at 1 8 of a second at f11 and ISO 100. The slow shutter speed paired with moving the camera creates motion blur, whereas the rapid pulse of all the flashes freezes the subject. This image would be impossible to create with just LED lighting. If you use the same camera settings and all LEDs, you would just create a blurry mess. And if instead you increase the shutter speed so that you could create a sharp image, well then you are giving up the motion blur. There's no separation, so you can't do it with just LED. To me, this is the biggest negative of using LED because it just throws away a lot of creative possibilities and fun techniques that explore time and motion. A final minor negative of LED is that it still doesn't render color as accurately as flash. It's improved a lot over the years, but it's still not as good. Despite all the cons that I've listed, I do think there are a few areas of photography that diminish the negatives of using LED and actually may be advantageous to use use LED instead of flash. The first one would be night photography. Not only are small and portable LEDs quite capable for night photography, but they also resolve the issue of acquiring focus, which is a huge pain point when using only flash. Some still life or tabletop photographers prefer LED too. With that type of photography, you're typically not concerned about portability because it tends to all happen in the same space. Brightness isn't a huge issue because you're often working in a controlled environment like a studio, and both the photographer and the subject are still, so there's no action freezing demand. Finally, that type of photography requires a lot of precision, so the what you see is what you get aspect of LED is very beneficial. So in conclusion, choosing LED just introduces a lot of hassles, restrictions, and lost creative potential. If you're a hybrid creator, I understand you might think I'm, I'm okay with working with less, but just really research for the type of images that you wanna create and what type of LED product it's actually gonna to take to get you the images that you want because it might have you considering buying both flash and LED for dedicated uses. There's also a middle ground available out there and that would be hybrid LED flash. That is any type of system that overcharges their LEDs for a short period of time to create a burst of light. So still an LED product, but creates a pseudo flash. This would be system like Rotolite Neos or the Godox FV series of lighting. Those systems still don't have the action freezing potential of flash, but they do give you some of that separation of settings as well as power back. So it might work for some users and maybe I'll make another video to follow up on exactly what that's capable of and where it would still fail. Let me know if you guys wanna see that. Now, I know a lot of my subscribers out there are full-time professionals, full-time creators. So if you have made the switch from flash to LED and found it beneficial, I'd like for you to share why in the comments below just so that people watching have the ability to read the comments and see some other perspectives. It's always really helpful in these type of videos. Beyond that, feel free to use the comments to ask any questions about using LED versus flash. If you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and hit that like button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm know that this is a quality video to send other people searching this topic, and I really would appreciate that. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.